black and gold fans, college football fans, welcome in or welcome back to another episode of the Touchdown Black and Gold Vlog. This is my instant reaction and recap to Iowa's 33. That's right, 33 big time points put up on the scoreboard to 13 victory yesterday inside of Kinnick Stadium over the Northwestern Wildcats in front of the homecoming crowd. So what an excellent day to be a Hawkeye. With that victory, Iowa improves to four and four overall on the year, two and three in Big Ten Conference play. Northwestern falls to one and seven overall, one and four within the Big Ten Conference. With that victory, ends Iowa's three-game losing streak within the conference. So it's great to get back on the right side of the records. And plus, if you watched my last uh, couple of episodes, you definitely knew that not only was it homecoming weekend, and the homecoming uh, folks love to see a victory, but also myself, your host Blair Parks, and his crew, that's right, the Parks clan, we were in attendance explaining why I'm coming to you on location live at the Comfort Inn and Suites rather than being in my basement in the man cave for this instant reaction and recap episode. But initially, as I always do, I like to kind of just start off with my initial thoughts on this game before I get into the good and the bad. Um, initially, I mean, even though this is a very impressive victory by our Hawkeyes, I mean, 33 points is the most points they've put up all season. It looked almost like a different offense. Defense, they basically just showed up and showed out. They do what they do, what we've gotten used to and kind of spoiled with week in and week out as Hawkeye fans. But I think a lot of this game, before I praise Iowa and what they accomplished yesterday, I think a lot of it really shows a reflection of really more or less where the Northwestern Wildcat program is, unfortunately. And if you know, if you've watched uh, previous episodes, you know that I am a big fan of Coach Patty Fitzgerald. His legacy only grows with me by the, by the passing day. It absolutely even improved more yesterday, and I'll, I'll share that with you here in a little bit. But I have nothing but the utmost respect for Pat Fitzgerald and what he's accomplished and what he continues to do at Northwestern. Yes, it's been a very down year for the Wildcats. I mean, they're, I don't think this team is going to win another game this season. And if you watched my uh, bold predictions episode for 2020 uh, season, I did predict that Northwestern would go winless, donut, in the Big Ten Conference but that game was put to that prediction was put to bed very early, week zero in Dublin when they beat Nebraska across the pond. But they haven't won since, so I just don't see this team getting another victory. Definitely can tell they're young and really are outnumbered, outpersonneled in key positions. Um, so it, a lot of it really more reflects Northwestern than Iowa. I mean, granted. I'll take what I saw yesterday, as of would the 70 plus thousand people inside of Kinnick, what we saw yesterday. And those of you who watched the game at home in the comfort of your own home. But if they can do this two games in a row, then maybe you'll make me a believer. But I'm, I'm only going to put this at face value for the victory that we saw yesterday. Um... So let's go into more specifics of this game. And I'm, I'm a little bit time compressed today. 15, 20 minutes max will be this one. Uh, I got to get back to the family. We're having a good time. We're heading back uh, tomorrow morning on Monday morning to get back home to Missouri to enjoy trick-or-treating with uh, the other side of the family. So let me start off by saying this. The starting quarterback, and I was a little bit surprised by this. Most of the week, I had not kept up with the so-called uh, depth chart. I mean, I know Alex Padilla and Spencer Petras were listed as co-starting quarterbacks, but I was surprised when, you know, Iowa received the opening kickoff and out, to, out on the field trots Spencer Petras wearing number seven, 
and he actually played the entire game, all right? I was very, not shocked, but surprised to see Spencer out there getting the start after Iowa went to Alex Padilla last week in the second half in that debacle, that embarrassment at the hands of Ohio State University, the Ohio State University. But Petrus looked like a brand new quarterback yesterday afternoon. Uh, and once again, it could be more of Northwestern, but these numbers speak for themselves, guys. I mean, obviously it was Iowa's best offensive performance all season, but Spencer on the day was 21 of 30, very good completion percentage for 220 yards, one touchdown pass, which yes, he threw a touchdown pass and with zero interceptions. So that was big, that was key. And the one thing that I liked, he spread the wealth among the receiving core. Eight different Iowa uh, re receivers caught a pass, four of those being to the wide receivers themselves. So I loved seeing that, to spread the wealth. That's something we have not seen all season from Spencer Petras, other than trying to force feed his stud tight ends of Sam Laporta and Luke Lachey. And Luke Lachey was the individual who caught that touchdown pass. So it was good to see him spread it out a little bit to his teammates. That was great. Um, rushing attack. I mean, the Iowa rushing attack really came to life in a big way yesterday. They tallied 173 total yards rushing. Good for a clip of 4.8 yards per rush. That's how you get it done. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. Uh, this very studly, very talented, true freshman, uh, KJ, Caleb Johnson, led the rushing attack with 88 yards on 14 attempts. And I've said this, I absolutely really love what he's cooking with for the future at Iowa. Now, hopefully, we hold on to this guy. He's very shifty, athletic, and plus, when he makes up his mind, he hits the hole hard. He reminds me a lot of Tyler Goodson, who we just saw leave early for the NFL last year uh, in a Hawkeye uniform, but he really reminds me more of Akram Wadley, who was just as shifty, quick, but when he would make up his mind, he would hit that hole and just go, 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 like New Rockney would say. So he led the way, 88 of those 173 yards total, and the thing is, what made that possible? And I'm going to give you another stat here to where this is going to prove it. The Iowa offensive line really, really did a total 180. And once again, I don't know if that comes down to who we played, but not just the rushing yards. And also, obviously, they gave Spencer Petrus better throwing windows they gave him more time to go through his progressions, but the Iowa O-line only gave up one sack. Uno, that is it. It has been a long time, I'm talking several seasons, as Iowa fans where we can say we only saw one sack being given up by our offensive line. Um, and there were a couple times where, believe it or not, Spencer Petrus being the mobile fleet of foot quarterback that he is, which you all know that's completely false, he did actually escape a couple of Northwestern rushers a couple times to get away, tucked and ran, and actually picked up a few yards here and there. So I think they could have maybe recorded a couple more sacks, but he was able to get away. So I was very impressed, and I've been saying that, guys, the entire season, you can blame Spencer Petrus. You can blame the lack of the rushing attack that we have. You can blame the wide receivers for not getting separation. You can blame the coaching, the calling, the scheming. I get it, but it all starts and ends with the Iowa offensive line, and they absolutely performed yesterday, and hopefully they can continue that going forward. Another good is the defense. I mean, wow. You talk about showing up, showing out. This is what they do. And by the way, please like, subscribe, click the button, 
comment. I want to hear from all of you, including you Northwestern fans. I did tag you in this. I also want to get your take on the game. Any of you college football fans out there, the Black and Gold family, let me know what you think. You guys drive these episodes. I want to hear from you. Now, the defense, wow. I mean, what, what a just workman display. Like usual, they packed their lunch and then did what they do. Gave up 18 total yards rushing. Wow, that is getting it done. And they also recorded seven sacks on the day. Um, Northwestern's quarterback was Brendan Sullivan making his second career start. I will tell you this, if this guy hangs around, and I don't know how many years of eligibility he has at Northwestern, please, Wildcat fans, let me know. But this guy really did impress me. For only his second career start against an upper echelon defense, which came into the day the sixth best defense in the nation, the guy looked pretty composed. His offensive line did not do him any favors, but his numbers weren't bad. He was 23 of 30, passing 159 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. So I think Northwestern fans hang with this guy. I think he definitely has the, the workings to develop and become kind of that next really good under-the-radar quarterback that Northwestern seems to have every now and then, like the Dan Purses, the uh, Kane Coulters. I mean, some of these guys that just come out of nowhere and just get it done. Um, oh, let's see, Tory Taylor, you know me, I've always got to give shout outs to the Iowa special teams because that's just who we are, defense and special teams. Uh, uh, Sullivan, our, uh, our kicker, uh, Edwards, oh, sorry, his name, we were four for four, kicking field goals. I'm sorry, his name, I had these notes, I can't look it up on a laptop, I just have written notes that I did quickly because we're traveling, like I said. Four for four field goals with a long of 54 yards. That was a very impressive boot. So great job for the Iowa kicking game. And, you know, my guy, the punter from down under, Tory Taylor only had one punt, guys. That proves to you how well the Iowa offense uh, controlled the, the game yesterday. I mean, Tory Taylor only saw the field for one punt. And I think because of that, he came in so cold. His one punt was a shank, only good for 12 yards. That set up Northwestern heavy in plus territory. And that's what led to their first touchdown. So unfortunately, guys, I think, you know, his candidacy is over. I think that one punt for 12 yards pretty much takes Tory Taylor out of the running for this year's Heisman Trophy. Sorry, Tory. <sighs> I'm still pulling for you. I love what you do. You're still my favorite Hawkeye right now. I think he is their MVP of this season. And I think he will end up being the most valuable player of this Hawkeye team. Um, so that's really it. I mean, we had a great time at Kinnick. The atmosphere was great. Um, Northwestern fans really seemed to enjoy themselves. And I always look for this. We try to make one game a year as a family. We didn't make one last year, and obviously the year before, the COVID year, we couldn't. So it was great to get there as a family, to celebrate the victory amongst our people. And it's a great atmosphere. And I always look for those things because I'm that fan. I try to represent the Iowa Hawkeyes the best I can. And I always am on the lookout for people disrespecting the visiting fans because it really leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And sometimes it does take one bad apple to ruin the batch to where one idiot fan does something to a visiting fans uh, teams and then they think, hey, this fan base is awful. You know, we don't like them, you know, the hell with them, whatever. But I didn't see any of that going on. All right, that's great. I love to see that. I think my children had a great time. It was my son's second game and my daughter's first game ever. And I think they had a really good time. And we had just perfect weather. I mean, if you were there or you watched on TV, I mean, not a, a cloud in the sky. Also, not a, not a single knot of wind. And it was a brutal sun, guys. It was, the highs were in the mid-60s. 
but we were in the sun stands the entire game and it felt like mid 70s by the end of the game we were absolutely gassed from being in the sun so that's really my only complaint but i can't complain about it being mid 60s last weekend in october seeing a football game in iowa city i mean how much can i really complain about that um the only other thing that's unfortunate I mean, the final score should have been 33-7. to So unfortunately, Northwestern scored their second touchdown as time expired on the last play of the game to get to 13 points. Hopefully that doesn't hurt the stats too much of this Iowa defense. Like I said, came into the game ranked sixth overall. I haven't checked the updated uh, rankings this morning. Hopefully, I don't think they moved up. Maybe they did to number five or four, but I think they don't, won't move down a spot giving up 13 points to Northwestern. And the other thing I want to say about Coach Pat Fitzgerald and my simple awe of him, he, you guys know that I'm a big fan. He's probably my number two man crush within the Big Ten, right slightly behind the bald-headed beauty, P.J. Fleck there at Minnesota. Is I love seeing the interaction in person of Coach Fitzgerald with his team. I mean, during warm-ups, we got into the uh, stadium fairly early to see the entire ceremony, the marching band, the national anthem, um, everything that homecoming is. And Coach Pat Fitzgerald would go to each and every separate unit. And within each unit, each individual player and communicate high five, chest bump, everything. To see the interaction that he has, and you can tell why he is so popular among his players. And then to watch Coach Ferentz on the other sideline, our sideline, not even really on the field during warmups, it's a little bit telling. And that's one thing that I've always admired about Northwestern under Coach Fitzgerald. No matter how good or bad they are, or how good or bad the team is they're playing, they will always give you maximum effort and play till the very end and always represent themselves, the coaching staff, the fans and the alumni and the program with pride. So hats off to you, Coach Pat Fitzgerald. You continue to be very close to my heart. And I think he actually, with that, got a little bit closer to tying or passing my number one man crush, P.J. Fleck. So that's really about it for today. Where we go from here up next, Iowa next week travels to Purdue to see if they can emulate yesterday's success against a totally different animal, an animal that can score in bunches very quickly. Can they corral the Purdue offense, which is right now you know, one of the two racehorses to win the Big Ten West? And they got to face off with my guy, former Iowa kick returner and wide receiver Charlie Jones, who's absolutely lighting it up for the Boilermakers this year. I can't wait to see how that plays down next week in West Lafayette. And Northern for Northwestern doesn't really get any easier. Next week, they host Ohio State, who scored a big victory this afternoon over Penn State in Happy Valley, a game that was very close. I believe, actually, Penn State had the lead early in the fourth quarter until Ohio State was able just to do what they do and turn it on and walk away with the victory. So that's it. So it's great to see an Iowa victory. It was great to be there. Thank you to Iowa City for hosting us. Um, it's been great to see my mother, the kid's grandmother, for a couple days. Um, you can find me on Tuesday, like usual, uh, early afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. I should have my week nine review and recap up for your listening and viewing pleasure. So until then, please guys, subscribe. The Touchdown Black and Gold vlog continues to gain a lot of momentum. Big Mo is on our side. I want to hear from all of you college football fanatics, Black and Gold fans, Northwestern fans, Duke fans, Kansas fans, UConn fans who scored a big victory yesterday over Boston College to get to four victories. What a great 
under the radar story UConn football has been this year, by the way. I think I might expand on them during Tuesday's episode as well. So until then, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you as always to share my love, passion for everything college football. So until Tuesday, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy Halloween. Enjoy it. Be safe. Kids, get as much candy as you can. And if people don't tell you otherwise, take two pieces of candy, if not three. Do it up proper like. And until then, I will see you and thank you for joining me on this special episode of the Touchdown Black and Gold Vlog. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.